The Choose Love movement offers no-cost solutions that keep our kids safe, providing them with the skills and tools they need to flourish. Join us in our mission to create the world we want to live in, one that's connected and compassionate. Check us out at chooselovemovement.org. Together, we can choose love. Welcome, everyone, to the Choose Love Movement podcast. I'm here with Joy Bauer. I am so excited to welcome her today. Joy has, and by the way, Joy, I looked these up uh, because you have so many certifications. I wanted to make sure that everybody knew what they were. She has a master's of science. She is a registered dietitian nutritionist and a certified dietitian nutritionist. And you are one of the nation's leading health authorities. You are the nutrition and healthy lifestyle expert for the Today Show and the host of NBC's Health and Happiness. Joy recently launched her own Amazon Live weekly show, Health, Happiness, and Joy, where she answers viewers' questions in real time, cooks up mouthwatering recipes, and shares her favorite products. In addition, Joy is the official nutritionist for the New York City Ballet, the creator of joybower.com, and a number one New York Times bestselling author with 14 bestsellers to her credit. Her latest book, Joy Bauer's Superfood, 150 Recipes for Eternal Youth, features delicious dishes to enhance health, boost energy, and increase longevity. In the earlier part of her career, Joy was the Director of Nutrition and Fitness for the Department of Pediatric Cardiology at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City, as well as the cl clinic as well as I knew I knew I wasn't going to be able to do the whole thing, but I wanted to read it because it's so amazing, as well as the clinical dietitian for their neurosurgical team. One of Joy's most rewarding experiences was creating and implementing Heart Smart Kids, a health program for underprivileged children living in Harlem. Prior to making the jump to media, she taught anatomy and physiology and sports nutrition at NYU's School of Continuing Education as she worked to build what would soon become the largest private nutrition center in the country. Passionate about delivering scientifically sound, realistic information to millions, Joy has received countless awards, including the National Media Excellence Award from two of the most esteemed organizations, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and the American Society of Nutritional Science. Joy has been featured countless times in prominent publications like the New York Times, Washington Post, People, U.S. Weekly, Life and Style, Parents, Cosmo, Vogue, Glamour, and Wall Street Journal, just to name a few. Wow. And now she's with us. Choose love. Welcome, Joy. For, can I just say how nice you are to read that whole thing? I, I, <laughs> it's so amazing. I wanted to read it all. I had to get it all in. That is an ama so many amazing accomplishments. Thank you so much. And, and, and let me just tell you, I am in awe of everything that you are doing. Such important work, touching, count, moving and touching countless lives. I mean, truly making a difference. So it is my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And you're excited for me to be here. Let me tell you, I can't wait to hear what you have to say because you are simply amazing. You're, you are a force. Thank you, Joy. As are you. I guess it takes one to know one, right? And you are also benefiting millions of people, especially, you know, we were just talking before, this is such a a difficult time that our nation and even our world is going through. You know, I am out and traveling and I see the effects on children and obviously their parents, but educators as well. And um, those are a lot of people that are listening to us right now. And your mantra, I love this because this was a little line that was after your name. Uh, Joy says, life is hard which is true, right? And food should be easy. Absolutely. That, yeah, yeah. Can you kind of explain that? And, and for me, food has never really been 
that easy. Uh, I, I have to admit, I know it's so important and it's the time that, you know, my son and I get together and we, we eat, we try to eat together as much as possible. Um, but it hasn't been that easy. So what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I think, I think you could take that uh, mantra and, and really unlayer it in a number of different directions. I think that um, from, from a scientific perspective, I would say that um, it's a great time to be eating well because we are uncovering every single day new studies showing that the compounds within nourishing wholesome food can really make a difference, can elevate our health in every single way, help us boost our heart health, think more clearly, um, jumpstart energy, help us with weight control, level out and balance our blood sugars, even promote sharper vision. So we know that by selecting the right foods and the right combinations, we can catapult ourselves to the top of our game. That's a fact. It's a bold statement, but it's a fact. And the cool thing is, is that we eat several times a day everybody eats. So just by being a little bit more thoughtful and mindful as to what we're putting on our plate or what we're putting on the table for our family, we really do have full control. And nowadays with so many things out of our control, it's really nice to know that this is a particular piece of the puzzle that truly is within our control. Now, at the same time, I say that food is more than fuel. Food is love, food mm. is emotion, food is tradition, food mm. is delicious. <laughs> and so I don't think anybody needs to be eating perfectly 24-7, 365 days a week. I certainly don't. No, <laughs> absolutely not. And my whole philosophy that I use for myself, that I've used in with my clients when I was in private practice, and I raised my kids with this philosophy. I have three adult kids who, my entire house, as you could imagine, we are foodies. You know, right now we're in the midst of March Madness. That translates to starch madness in my house. We always find a way <laughs> to, to work it in with the food. And so I, I used the food philosophy 90-10. If you go out of your way to eat healthfully, 90% of the time, you have 10% wiggle room for the foods you love. And, you know, for me, that's pizza and chocolate and wine. And, um, you know, if I'm in a really nice restaurant, I don't want to be careful. When we're out at gatherings, family gatherings for the holidays, you want to eat the traditional fare. And there's always going to be room for that stuff. But 95, 90% of the time, I, I slipped and said 95 90. Probably 95 for you, but 90 for the rest of us. <laughs> I would actually say 90 for me. 90 okay. for me. And, 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 you know, if, if anybody's listening and, and they feel like, well, I'm 50-50 right now, hey, 50-50 is an ad, admir, ma, admirable start, and everybody has to start somewhere. So mm -hmm. better is better. As long as each day you move forward and you try to be a little bit healthier than you were the day before, hey, that's amazing. And that's progress. And that's what it's about. So when I say life is hard, food should be easy. You know, I hope to instill during our time together, our chat together today, um, that there are so many practical, manageable ways to just eat better and choose more wisely and also be more strategic in food prep. It's not hard. I don't want to slave in the kitchen for hours and hours and hours. We don't have this, the time for that, right? We're multitasking. We've got a lot of things to accomplish. And I don't expect anybody else to either. So really with my recipes, they're simple. They use everyday ingredients, but they deliver the taste we're looking for, but also the nutrition that our bodies crave. And that's what it's about. It is. And when you say that food is love, it really is love. When you're, I, I know that my son JT loves when I'm in the kitchen and he hears, and I remember this from growing up, my mom with, with dishes clanking mm -hmm. and the smells of the food that they're making, that providing that nutrition for bodies, that is a sign of love. Uh, and, and, you know, I grew up with it. I try to give it to JT as much as possible. I was a single mom. And so you know, we got up really early and, 
I took the kids to daycare. I worked all day. I came home. Sometimes we went grocery shopping at the end of the day or picked up something along the way. So um, what would you say for the single parents out there that have kind of a really hectic lifestyle? First, I'm going to say that it's not where you eat, it's what you eat. So like if you end up having to take advantage of some of the fast food restaurants or chains or delivery services, you can always find something and make special requests so that the food that is super easy or delivered to your doorstep is healthy. So I, I want to put that out there. It doesn't mean you have to prep your food for every single meal, every single day. Uh -huh. But I also think it's very, very helpful for everyone to have five go-to easy, delicious recipes that are healthful in your arsenal. So for example, and it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. I can whip up a grilled chicken Parmesan in 15, 20 minutes, easy. I Ooh. take a thin piece of chicken and I'll either put it in the oven because it, once it's thin, you could pound it or you could uh, pan fry it, but it's going to come together in, you know, a couple of minutes on each side, right? Mm -hmm. Smother it with sauce, some part skim mozzarella cheese in the mm -hmm. oven it goes. And at the same time, you could have frozen vegetables that you just nuked in the microwave. Or mm -hmm. if you want to get a little fancy, you could roast them on a, on a big sheet pan with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. But easy. We just made grilled, healthy chicken parm. Another thing, turkey burgers. When you make your burgers, I use lean ground turkey meat. When mm -hmm. you make your burgers, they freeze beautifully. So why not double and triple that recipe? And then you have all of them stashed in the freezer. So they're ready to go when you have a super hectic weekday night in between soccer carpools and debate club, and you're working late at the office. Even when you don't come home, you could have your kids take them out and defrost them, you know, if that's something that you want to do. Another thing to keep in mind, a bowl of healthy whole grain fiber rich cereal with some milk and berries on top, that's a great dinner. <laughs> that, that could double as a dinner and also eggs for dinner. I love some scrambled eggs with some whole grain toast and maybe a sliced orange. You just had a balanced, beautiful dinner. So you don't have to think gourmet. You just have to have these five healthful recipes on automatic pilot and make sure that you also have the ingredients for them on hand so that you could, you know, jump into motion at any given time that you need to pull them out. You know, another thing that I love to make, this is what happens, Scarlett. You get me talking about food <laughs> and it's hard to stop me. <laughs> but something that we've been loving is taking, elevating a regular peanut butter and jelly sandwich by doing this. I take two slices of whole grain bread and on both of them, I do a thin schmear of peanut butter spread. That was the New York in me coming out, a schmear of peanut butter. <laughs> so a, a thin spread of peanut butter. And if you have allergies in the house, this works with soy nut butter, almond butter, cashew butter. I love all the butters. And then instead of putting sugary jam on top, you put some fresh fruit. So it can be mm. like bananas, or I also love to slice purple grapes. Maybe mm. it's whole little plump blueberries or raspberries or sliced strawberries. So you put that on top. To get you get that sweetness. Yeah. Yes, it's juicy. And then you take the top half and you put it on top of your sandwich. And then you take the non-stick oil spray and you spray both sides of the sandwich and you heat it in the grill. And what happens is the, the nut butter gets ooey and gooey and the outside of the bread toasts. And you just made yourself this like mouthwatering, crave worthy mm -hmm. peanut butter and fruit sandwich. So mm -hmm. that like all of these little tricks you know, validate that healthy eating doesn't have to be gourmet. And yet, you know, you're creating something that tastes as good as it is good for you. And I think key to that too, is being present and really tasting the, and, and, and experiencing the textures and, and really not on the cell phone, right? Or, or watching TV while you eat, but really being present. Somebody once said to me, uh, if you think about what went into the ingredients and how long it took for, say, 
uh, if you're using grapes, the grapes to grow and the grapes are there for you. You should be there for the grapes. And I loved that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I love that line, but it's so true. You want to power down. And if you're with somebody, whether it's a friend or um, a child or your partner, or even like a parent, you could even be setting up your iPad or your computer and you could be virtually having a meal with somebody. Mm -hmm. A lot of us did this during the pandemic. It's such quality time. So you're so present. You don't necessarily have to just focus on the food, but I think that, you know, the idea here is you're not texting, you're not watching television, you're not reading while mm -hmm. you're eating, because then you're not even really paying attention to your hunger and fullness cues. And that's where a lot of people get in, into trouble because you're never fulfilled. You're never feeling satisfied. And, and the other thing is when you take the time and the energy and effort to prepare something that's good for you, you earned that opportunity to relax and connect with it. Enjoy mm. it. Mm, I love that. And you said something really profound. You said that it gives you a sense of control back in your life. When in, in this world where there's so much that we can't control, we can't control the COVID-19 virus uh, we can't control the war that's going on in the Ukraine, but we can control ourselves and what's going on. We can control what we put into our bodies. And with the Choose Love movement, we talk a lot about controlling our thoughts because we can't always control, obviously, what happens to us, but we can control how we thoughtfully respond to it. So we go to our thoughts, which impact how we feel, which then impacts our behavior and how we show up for people. Yeah so important that we realize that we have some semblance of control in our lives. When we feel like we don't have control, that's when we feel helpless and hopeless. We can get angry and uh, become pessimistic and really kind of spiral out of control. And, uh, and so our whole formula, we have this formula for choosing love that brings that locus of control back inside so that you have the power, you make things happen. You have a, a, at least a semblance of control of your life. And that gives you hope. And it's so important. And so having food be a part of that, because you can control that you can control what you eat eat and and then and then the idea of zooming with somebody especially when they're more uh, uh, looming another uh, strain coming up i just read in the news yeah. and uh and so if if that does happen that i never even thought about that actually with all the zooms that i do believe it or not i never thought about having dinner with someone over a zoom that's amazing yeah it's really nice and it's the same idea as having um you know, like a talk with someone, a catch up while you're outside on a walk. Yeah. It, 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 you're, you're multitasking, right? You're, you're getting an exercise, but you're also connecting. And a lot of times, you know, you're reaching out and you're making someone else's day. And when you do an act of kindness, it all comes back to mm. you know, sort of elevating your own state of happiness as well. Absolutely. So, and I think the multitasking when you eat dinner with a virtual friend or a relative is that it you're connecting, but it also forces you to be present with your meal and not gobble it down standing up while you know you're you're watching something on television or you're reading through something or sorting through and and another thing i do want to say to people is that you don't have to control every single meal throughout every single day and week that could be very very overwhelming because people are starting at different places so by giving yourself a realistic goal like this week i'm going to try 3 new dinner recipes. And I'm going to set the table really pretty, even if it's only for me with real mm. silverware and real flatware. And maybe, you know, I'm going to make myself um, a sparkling water, but I'm going to put it in a wine glass, a long stemmed wine glass. So it feels festive and I'm going to sit down and enjoy it. That is a real game plan. That's a real goal. And, and you're starting this sense of food control. And when you fuel your body with healthful ingredients, nutrient-packed produce, lean protein, 
whole grains, healthy fats, you automatically boost your self-esteem and your feelings of self-worth. And then you know how this works, like the, the happier and, and more uplifted you are, you put that energy out into the world. So it's a two-way street. Food is powerful. It doesn't only work physiologically. It helps you emotionally. It helps you psychologically. And, and like you said, the best part, we're in control of it, which is so beautiful. Yeah. And you're saying that food is love. Well, if you feed yourself healthy, nutritious food, you are loving yourself. And when you really only when you love yourself, can you love somebody else? And so starting like that, and, you know, you were talking about setting the table. I actually have my grandmother's China mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, silverware. So I use that and I will in the summer cut flowers out of my garden. I always yeah. put fresh flowers on there and then candles for me, make it really over the top fancy. So I have all these candles. I even have like a little candelabra candle thing where in the middle. And uh, so we have all of that and it just makes it a beautiful space. That's really uh, ha has a lot of enjoyment. And even on my table, this is funny. I have this old Oh, I have a 1740 farmhouse. And so everything in it is old. It is old itself, but I have this, this, uh, old table with, uh, with doorknob feet. And we have a little, um, gosh, I can't remember the name of the Dremel. And when people come over, they will Dremel their names into the top. So they've done this for years. So my brothers would bring their girlfriends and they would Dremel in the initials in a heart. And of course now they're married. So every once in a while, I'll take this. <laughs> Jesse Dremeled his name, my, my son that died. And so we have mm -hmm. his name with the three S's. He's J-E-S-S-E. -S -E. He, he did three S's backwards. <laughs> So we have that and it's just such a, it's, it's fun. It's very informal, obviously, but um, we've got friends that would have a couple glasses of wine and start dremeling in maybe a, a picture or something, just really, really making, making it fun. I think fun is so important as well. No, it's the experience and you're so talking yeah. language. I'm a candle collector. Okay. I like all the visuals, you know, and, and the, the eating experience, a lot of it is, um, you know, uh, smells and the visual of the presentation. It's, it's much more than just taste. Don't get me wrong. I love the flavor combinations and, you know, all of the different personality directions that you could take a dish. But if you take just a few moments to sort of spend some time on the presentation and the candles. And I, I love the whole thing that you have with the engraving of names. You could stare at that for, for probably hours and hours and every single name tells a story and, and lends right. a different memory. I just love that so much. Yeah, yeah. food is love, food is love for sure. And I also think, you know, speaking of food is love and, and the type of foods that we love, right? We tend mm -hmm. to go for, let's let's just say indulgent from mac and cheese and pastas and buffalo wings and chocolate just about anything and i think one of the big messages that that everyone should really understand is that again there's a place like 90 10 90 percent healthful foods 10 percent wiggle room for all of that other stuff but within that 90 percent you can learn how to reimagine all of the foods that you love in i call it a joyful rendition you really seriously can so that you could eat the foods that you love every single night of the week and feel really good about it. For example, I make ice cream with just frozen bananas. So I peel my bananas, I cut them into wheels and I stash them in the freezer. And then I toss them in my food processor with either a little bit of cocoa powder or sometimes a dollop of creamy almond butter or peanut butter. And I just whirl that thing up and you basically have the most indulgent soft serve ice cream so wow. there's a lot of I things that. and even pasta you know i listen i love a good pasta and there's a lot of great brands out there now that make you know like super ingredient pastas with beans and chickpeas and lentils and whole grains but you can also toss on a thick pesto sauce or gorgeous marinara sauce or carbonara sauce on top of 
what I call zoodles, which are zucchini noodles or spaghetti squash, so that you're eating all of the, these vegetables, but they twirl on the fork, just like pasta. So there's a lot of tricks and strategies that everybody can do. And again, it doesn't take a lot of effort. It really doesn't. You know, maybe the first time there's a learning curve, but then after that, you're in, you get it. And then suddenly you become, you know, the mad scientist in the kitchen and you think to yourself, hmm, what about this? Or what about this? And before you know it, you know, you're a healthy chef. And it's so good for you physically, mentally, emotionally, I feel like spiritually as well. You actually have something on your website that talks about how food cures different ailments and you include diabetes, insomnia, anxiety, depression, cancer. So food as a cure, which I hadn't thought of either. That's really interesting. Right. And I want to be careful with the word cure because, you know, obviously when we talk about things like cancer, what we do know is that food can reduce the risk and, and significantly for a lot of different cancers. I think they say now that a third, 33% of all cancers are lifestyle related. I mean, that's a huge number. And when we talk about lifestyle, we mean smart food choices and exercise and also reducing stress. Um, but we do know that, for example, you know, on, on the subject of cancer, that fruits and vegetables are loaded with antioxidants that protect our bodies from free radicals that get in and change our DNA, which increase the risk for certain cancers. We know that there are certain foods that help with brain health. For example, cocoa powder has something called flavanols. And flavanols have been shown to keep our arteries happy, healthy, and elastic. And anything that helps your heart is also gonna help your brain. We know that omega-3 fats uh -huh. can help alleviate anxiety and depression, which is really cool. And so much so that even psychiatrists now are sort of embracing the use of omega-3 fats within their treatment courses. So when you think about food and omega-3s, I think salmon is probably the most famous for omega-3 fats. Salmon mm -hmm. also has vitamin D, D is in David. And that's mm -hmm. another one that is shown in correlation with seasonal aff aff affect disorder. Did I just say that right? Yeah, I always yes. say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so um, you know, using food to help remedy some of these ailments. Um, and in some cases, food food really is that powerful. It's like, you know, mother nature's medicine cabinet. It can help reverse, manage, treat, um, and prevent so many ailments out there. Aches and pains, for example. There's so many great anti-inflammatories. Ginger, turmeric, again, the omega-3s. So, um, you know, it's exciting. And it's like so much more delicious to eat our medicine than to pop pills as medicine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's more effective too when our bodies are eating the food than when we're just taking it in pill form. Mm -hmm. Is that well, right? I, I think that um, for, from it, you know, yes and no to that. First, I, I do want to say like I'm all for medicine. And I what I what I like to do is I if somebody, for example, is taking an anti-anxiety or antidepressant, um, I like to add the food stuff on top of that to see if it can help and, and maybe magnify the effects of the medicine. And the same thing with statins. You know, I would never tell somebody to stop taking their statins if they have high cholesterol and instead start eating pistachios because we know pistachios can help lower cholesterol. Yeah. I would say instead, take your statins and let's add on the pistachios and the salmon and see if these things can help. Um, but when it comes to supplements, like for another, in other words, popping an omega-3 supplement versus eating the salmon with the omega-3s, it's a little bit tricky to know which would work better because, you know, on one hand, we know that the omega-3s help. On the other hand, sometimes the food has other synergistic nutrients that are all working together to help you know, sort of ease that particular ailment. And, and you're not going to get from the omega-3 supplement, you're not going to get all that high quality protein and the amino acids that you're getting from the salmon. So, you know, it gets a little bit complicated, but the bottom line is 
all of the common sense foods, you know, the usual suspects that people would think, fruits and vegetables, the more the better, lean proteins, whole grains, nuts and seeds, um, avocados, extra virgin olive oil, these foods, they, they're your power play. These are the foods that will help you feel your absolute best, become your absolute best self. And that's what we, you know, everybody wants. We're, we're, we're all, you know, um, individual people who are striving to be the absolute best that we as our individual person can be. And food could help that enormously. And of course, exercise is the perfect comrade. Absolutely. And as parents, we want to provide and protect for our kids. And food is such a great way to do that as well. And love them. I never brought love into the whole food conversation, but that is so important. So I know that uh, you know, speaking with my friends and, and other people and, and how busy everyone is today and how hard it is to get everybody to the kitchen table and especially including our kids in food prep and what's going on in the kitchen, getting them maybe away from screens and, and uh, you know, starting a dialogue about nutrition. How, how, would you give some advice on doing that? Yes, and I think that as parents, we each know our kids best and we know what kind of dialogue and language will work best for our kids. So, so for example, if your kid is a brainiac and very academic, you're gonna talk about brain foods and how to ace exams. If your kid's really sportsy and into basketball and soccer, you're gonna talk about how foods can make them faster and stronger. If you're dealing with an adolescent girl who's very into her hair and her, her skin and preventing breakouts, you're gonna talk about luscious locks and a glowing complexion. So I think getting the, the connection and your language down is super important because that's when it's going to resonate. And then after you, you, you figure out how to make that work, there's so many things you can do. In my house, when my kids are growing up, my kids are older now. So my daughter is 27, my son is 24, and my youngest, my baby is 21. So that, that, that's really um, letting you know I have a lot of experience. <laughs> with, you you know, know. And, and the key is how do we get our kids to eat healthy without making them nuts? And so you want to do this in a way, again, talk their language and involve them in the kitchen. And it doesn't have to be every meal. And so what I would do is I would have each of my kids responsible for one meal each week. So let's say Jessie, my older daughter, was responsible for Tuesday night dinners because I knew her schedule. And, you know, Cole was so booked during the week that on Saturdays, his thing was brunch. And Aiden was responsible for another day during the week. And so we would huddle on what we thought we wanted the menu to be. And they would go with me to the grocery store and we would pick up the stuff and they would watch me checking out the different produce items and, you know, comparing prices and figuring out what was right, what was enough, what was too much. And then they would help me with prep. And when they were little, for anybody listening that has little kids, it's really fun to also have them help you make menus for the table. And you could also do fun things like theme nights. We, would, we themed the nights to help me organize because I was also trying to balance work. And, you know, I was a workaholic and a mat momaholic. And so we would have, let's say, um, you know, it was meatless Mondays, and then it was Tex-Mex Tuesdays, and we had stir fry Wednesdays and pasta Thursdays, and of course, it was always pizza Fridays. And so you have those themes, which then anchors the organization of that dinner, because dinner tends to be the most hectic. And then you could vary up the menus within each of those themes. And, you know, we had an anything goes on Sunday. So you could be wide open. And certainly you're going to have curveballs and parties and plans and illness that's going to throw you a little off balance. But again, it, it lends a really nice structure and organizational support so that you're not starting from scratch. Because we've all been there. Four o'clock hits and you're like, ah! Oh yeah. <laughs> McDonald's, you know, like that's what happens. We, we end up just like losing it and falling apart. So the, the theme night thing works really well. And then again, having each of your kids 
just designate one night with the adult to sort of, you know, brainstorm and huddle. And, and also what happens then is they are really excited about their night, but your other kids become much more respectful when it's not their night because they know their night is going to be coming right around the bend and they want everybody into it when it's their night. So it just, it, it really seemed to work out well for me. And if you ever make a meal, this, this is, this is the way that I handled not becoming a short order cook. If you ever make a meal and there's always going to be one person, a finicky kid at the table that maybe doesn't like what you're serving. What I would tell you is to have one fall back, super simple plan B that does not require the oven and keep it on repeat. So eventually they get bored with it. So for example, mm. it may be a bowl of cereal, or maybe it is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So it's very, very simple to put together. But after three nights of eating that peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you better believe Timmy is going to start looking around on the table and taking a bite of the broccoli or sticking yeah. his fork in your pasta pesto that you made or trying your chicken bruschetta or whatever it may be. So it's a nice strategy and it just, it, it helps to ease some of the extra work that uh, as parents, we sometimes place on ourselves. That is such a fantastic idea. Wow. And let, unless you're my nephew who I think ate bread for six years, <laughs> but, you know, he's an anomaly. So yeah, is he still like bread to this day? No, he's getting better. He's okay. getting better. Yeah. And then, which, which leads me to say, there's always hope. I'm telling you when, when, when your kids like finally walk down the aisle, they usually eat more than bread or more than chicken nuggets. They don't, they no longer have their pacifiers. They're not in diapers. Like it does work out. I promise. Right, right. And and my sister-in-law was very stressed out about it, but but it's so true. It does work out. It, this too shall pass and it does. Mm -hmm. And it's always important to remember. So I wanted to ask you too, we know that inflation is here and it is hitting us at the uh, supermarket. So food is becoming more expensive. And this is really a question for me too. Where... <sighs> Where do we focus with that? I mean, this, I, I usually try to buy organic, but I've noticed recently that organic is so much more expensive. And I know that there's the dirty dozen, but how would we navigate that with all of the changes that are going on now? So let me, I'm, I'm going to start with your organic question because that's a okay. really good question. Um, yeah. It, it's so admirable that you are going out of your way to spend extra money for organic. And I do that too, whenever I can. But what I do want your yeah. listeners to know is that the upside of all of the nutrient density in produce items um, is the bigger push than the downside of some of the pesticides that you would be getting on non-organic. So for people that cannot afford to be buying organic ever or right now in this period of inflation, mm -hmm. don't stop eating produce. It is super, super important. You know, you can get some off of the outside by doing a really nice wash, maybe several rinses, but mm -hmm. that produce is so important. So important, in fact, that I would say the number one way and the easiest way that everyone could elevate their health is by incorporating produce into every single meal. If you walk away with one strong health piece of advice, that would be it. Produce in every single meal that you eat. It is loaded with the good stuff. Fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and it's high in volume and it's low in calories. So for weight management purposes, it's also good for that as well. In terms of what to look for, just to sort of be a little bit more budget conscious, I would say, pre-plan your menu for the week. Because when you don't go in with a roadmap, we tend to over-purchase and then things can go bad in the fridge. So mm -hmm. know exactly what you're buying, only buy the amount of fresh produce that you're going to be eating before it goes bad, and then take advantage of frozen. So frozen right now hasn't 
elevated as quickly as some of the other items in the grocery store. The nice part about frozen is they pick it in the peak of ripeness and they flash freeze it. So it still has all of the vitamin and nutrient content. Of course, the downside is you lose a little bit on flavor, but it still works. And there's no waste. As long as you use what you use and you wrap up really well the rest so you don't get freeze or burn, you're in a really good place. And frozen fruit is fantastic for smoothies and frozen veggies are great for soups. So there's a lot that you can use frozen for. And then the second thing I would say is I know like we're all very loyal to our brands that we love and we've been buying on repeat for years and years and years. But look also and compare the ingredients, the price um, from the generic store brands compared to the brands that we love. Because every once in a while, you'll see that it's actually exactly or very, very close to the same thing. Um, And that's sometimes with things like Greek yogurt or cottage cheese, Mm -hmm. um, even things like ground turkey meat um, and sauces and marinades. So just be, you know, a little bit Colonel Sleuthy with that stuff. And you could probably save yourself a bundle. Um, And also whenever you can buy the larger sizes versus the single portion snacks Mm -hmm. and um, yogurts, because the larger, when you, when you look at ounce per ounce, you're paying much less for, let's say a large container of Greek yogurt versus the single. And so like these are just, you know, small tips to help you. But I think the real big one is having a game plan beforehand. That's, that's so important. I know that, uh, and not going to the store hungry, right? Because I go and I'm just, just taking in everything. And I get home and I think, what did I do? Except for here at Wild Rose Farm, which is where I live, nothing goes to waste. So I'm thinking as you're talking, I have celery that I bought that I was going to juice and didn't. And it is all soft now in my refrigerator, but it goes, everything goes out to the chickens and the chickens eat everything. So you were talking about eggs before. I think one of the joys of my life is literally going outside and every morning I will pick the eggs out of the chicken coop and they're all different colors of beautiful pink and green and brown and and just it's like gorgeous and then bringing them in and I have eggs almost every morning with uh with as much cinnamon as I can put on them it's like dessert it's like a custard dessert for me and you know what also eggs I'm glad you brought up eggs I feel like 2022 is the the year of the egg and you can use up almost anything you have in the fridge in, in, in an omelet or frittata or scrambled eggs. I put leftover vegetables up the kazoo. Yeah. In my, sometimes it's, do you want a little eggs with your vegetables? Cause I have so many vegetables in there. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing. Look to see what you can recycle. And, and for people who buy a lot of fresh herbs, don't let them go bad. Chop them up, put them in ice cube trays with a little bit of broth, freeze them, and then pop them out and put it in a Ziploc bag to save yourself some space. And then whenever you make a soup or whenever you're making a casserole or chili or whatever, you just dissolve that broth with, uh, with the fresh herbs that are chopped up right into your creation and boom, you just gave it an explosion of flavor. But the best part is you didn't waste those precious herbs. That is amazing. That's amazing. Uh, I was speaking of frozen. I was at my friends the other day and actually, actually a couple friends had frozen grapes and mm-hmm. I had never, I never, for some reason thought about that. And what a, fantastic snack. One of my friends put just a bunch of grapes in little plastic bags. Her husband grabs them on the way to work. And when he comes home and it's a perfect snack for kids. So with that in mind, what are your favorite fun, fast, good for you snacks for kids? Um, well, if you're, ho- I love the, I love the frozen grapes and I do frozen too. Oh my grapes don't totally freeze. So it becomes almost like like a slushy consistency. It's really super delicious. And bananas, if you cut up bananas into wheels, it it feels like you're eating little wheels of ice cream because they get nice and cream. They they start off frozen and then they sort of melt 
when creamy deliciousness right in your mouth. So I love doing that with bananas as well. And also, here's a great tip. You could pick up the frozen pitted cherries year round in the grocery store. And in the Bauer house, we eat them right out of the freezer bag. It's like Italian icing without any extra sugar. They're so delicious. So that's a really great one. Yeah, we have those. And also I found pomegranate seeds. Yum. Love them. That on on a yogurt, on a vanilla Greek Uh, yogurt. That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, I I thought, gosh, sometimes I get a pomegranate and I just, I I tackle it almost, struggle with it for a couple (laughs) of days, trying to get everything out. I'm all, I've got it all over me. And then here they were in this bag, frozen. It's it's kind of a feeling of accomplishment though, when you actually are able to, what should we call it, de-gut (laughs) <laughs> slice up an actual pomegranate because you get the juice from it and you yeah. also get the seeds. Here's another snack that I love for kids. Um, I like to slice up an apple and then I take um, like a, a rounded tablespoon of peanut butter and I put it in a little microwave safe bowl and I nuke it for about 30 to 60 seconds. So you get the microwave, you get the peanut butter nice and pourable. And then I lay out my slices of apples, almost like they're nacho chips on a plate. And I drizzle the nut butter all over it. And then if you want, you could sprinkle on slivered almonds or pecans or walnuts or peanuts, all sorts of things, even shredded coconut. And you just made apple nachos. And how fun is that for, you know, kids to like yeah you could share them they could make them it's it's super easy so that's a fun one that is really fun well i was watching your show on amazon live earlier i didn't even know that amazon live had shows and it was so fun it's like it's like you you have your own club and you know people that come on and 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 you give them a shout out and then everybody's there and it's like a party and it's so fun so i wanted to encourage the listeners of this podcast to to check you out there and uh and and this has been so amazing you've given us so many great things one that we can show our love for ourselves and others with food we can get a sense of control back in this out of control world with food Mm -hmm. i love that we can uh we can control our health and and prevent ailments with food and i love the 90 10 ratio which is eat really healthy 90 percent of the time but you have that 10 percent. and for me that's realistic because i'm not perfect <laughs> and i'm i am not a perfectionist either so having that 90 10 is really good and uh do you have any kind of last tips for us as we navigate our, I'm calling it our brave new world. Brave new world. Um, I guess I would leave everybody by saying our body is truly the house that we're going to live in for the rest of our lives. So we have to treat it with the utmost respect. And it doesn't mean to your point, giving up all of the foods that we absolutely love. It just means being smart and mindful. And again, it's about respect because when you are more thoughtful about the fuel that you put into your body or the food that we nourish our house with, I'm telling you, you will increase your physical, your psychological, and your emotional well-being. And it is so worth it. And it's within our reach, total control. And food is also connection. It's a way to connect with one another. And we know that connection is literally the key to happiness. Mm -hmm. If you see this above me, Joy, I have the, our formula. So kind of, I'm try to use the formula at the end of each podcast and kind of relate it to what we're talking about, but the courage to, to really love yourself with what you put in your mouth and, and try new things and, uh, and, and really have the courage to commit to uh, making those three meal plans per week to start out. Mm-hmm. Being grateful for, for what we have. My goodness, we can go to the grocery store and we have just so many choices 
and and being grateful to have a family to make good choices for. And then the forgiveness piece, which is for me, forgiving myself for uh, not following that 90% in the 90, 10 <laughs> and, uh, and then get ready, getting right back on, you know, the wagon and, uh, and, and just thinking, you know, if you, if you fall off, that's okay. You just start right back up again and forgive yourself, forgive others, move on. And then the compassion and action, which is uh, stepping outside of your own busyness, uh, which we all have and distractions every day and really focusing on your family and bringing them together around the table to eat using zoom which i hadn't thought of before and and uh, and really taking care of yourself and others and as you said it is so important for our health and uh, we are we're so grateful for you joy and everything that you bring to the world you you really are uh, such a light. And this is such an important, I mean, what we, we are, what we put into our bodies, right. And you have the most incredible message. I feel like we work closely together. We're proactive, preventative. We talk about thoughts and we're all about relationships and managing our emotions and, and you're managing uh, the nutrition and it all works together to, to, uh, to help us flourish as human beings. Oh, that was perfectly put. And Scarlett, thank you for having me here. And like, you are a light. You are a very bright light. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joy. Yay. <laughs> that was great. You're, you're amazing. You're you, you are amazing. <laughs> you know, I just blabbed. You're, you know, you're special. You're really special. I am so, so appreciative of you spending time with us. This is really going to help. We're going to get this out. We're in over 10,500 schools. We're going to get this out to all everyone who's downloaded a program, all the families, all the kids. And then this, is, this goes all around the world. So we're going to get this out to all of our followers. And they're all going to know you, get to know you, be exposed to you and your brilliance and everything that you offer to the world. So... Thank you. Talk about gratitude. I am so grateful for you. Oh gosh. Well, listen, right back to you. So you let me know if there's anything I could do to help you. And then when you do get it out, um, I'll, I'll push it on my social platforms too. So hopefully Great. you can get new people as well. That's amazing. All of our programming, it's all character, social, emotional development. It is lifespan. Uh, we have prenatal, infant, toddler, pre-K through 12th grade. We have programming for homes for parents to work with their kids and then also for communities, this is all free. So you you pushing this out on your social media is really helping us just make everybody aware that this is out there. Amazing, amazing. And you know what you'll see, you know, if you find that there's like a big interest in the future, maybe what we could do is like a cooking party. So oh, that wow. everybody gets like the recipes and you know, that they, they could, Join. They can watch, or well, I guess we would pre-record it. So we would pre-record it, but like you would cook with me. We would do it virtually, so oh. then they would be able to replicate it in their house if they want. And and you know, it could be snacks, it could be breakfast, it could be you know, easy stuff. Oh, that would be absolutely amazing. Let's let's definitely do that. I'll have Pam schedule. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, that'll. Th those have been super popular virtual events over the past gulp two years. Oh, wow. Isn't it hard to say two years? It's I like, know. I know, but I know, I know. But you well, certainly use this time wisely. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I actually wrapped an RV with the choose love message and took it out on the road because nobody was getting out, nobody was getting together. So I thought, you know what, we're going to bring hope and healing out to schools. We went to colleges. We went to prisons. We went all over the place. So I am as passionate about choosing love as you are about food. And so I think it's a good partnership. Great. Well, thank you. Mwah. Oh, mwah. thank you so much. Okay. We'll speak soon. Say hi to Pam. I will. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. It's all part of us, we can all choose love, it'll lift you up, if you let it in, let the 
healing. 